we'll be talking today about networking. Um, and uh, I just, let's, I'll start with saying that we should all know and, and digest the fact that um, most, the majority of what this, of, of what will um, dictate if we get a job or not is not in our hands, okay? It's not, it's in other people's hands. Uh, recruiters, I don't know, a thousand other things. And we have a small part in it that we should do 100%, but really there are a lot of things that need to go well for us to get a job, okay? I'm saying that not as a, not to discourage, but the other way around, it's all a matter of statistics, okay? Your data, people, statistics is your thing, right? Right? Um, so that, that's, that's the first point I would, I want you to, to, to dig digest this, uh, this evening. Um, should I just start? Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. How was your life, I don't know, two years ago? Ah, two years ago. Okay. Um, I had only one child. Um, and I was working at a uh, place with hummus, right? I was in the kitchen making hummus all day. Uh, I don't know, 10, 10 hours a day on my feet. Not so easy, but not that bad. Um, but the main thing is, is like looking forward, my wife and I didn't see any, any future in that job. We, I didn't want to uh, find myself fighting for my child to have a soccer hook after school. I, I didn't want this, this uh, reality. I wanted to have and to just, you know, live a life calmly without like really you know, being, being, uh, uh, not, a, not on survivor mode. Okay. That's the main, uh, the main thing. Um, so I started to look for, for a lot of stuff. And my father is like, he's in high tech for, for a lot of time, uh, not in software, but in high tech. And he pushed me. He always have, he always did push me to go to try to, to do, to check, so, so I finally did, and I found that software development coding that's that's a niche I could find myself in. I I also did in like in high school a bit studying of that, and I, I I had fun. I remembered I had fun. So 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 I looked I looked for programs. I found Practicum. Um, I got hooked on the pre course. I think everyone had a, some sort of pre-course, right? Right, Dylan? It's a thing for everyone? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, so... Uh, they just jump in. Let's, awesome. Yeah. So in my cohort, we had this pre-course. I got hooked, really. So I, I you know, I, had, I got a picture of like, this is something I could make a living off for a while and knowing having that I can have fun, right? Something that I, I feel that satisfies me. It's fun. It's, I, I, I may have a future in this. And so I started the course. And, and somewhere in the beginning, um, I encountered the first very meaningful point in time that uh, was important for my future and how, like, how I got the job. Okay. Eventually, so practicum through this uh, meetup, uh, like this starting, uh, this uh, the the kickoff of the course in their office. I believe you all had one, um, and in that meetup there was a panel of speakers with uh, industry experience, and one of them, his name was Liad. Uh, he said with very very serious eyes, he said. Listen, today after we finish this meetup, you go back home 
and you open a Twitter and a LinkedIn account, okay, and you start working on that. Because in 10, 10 months from now or a year, you will really regret if you didn't. And so it was a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, I saw his, I saw he was serious. Um, so, so I did it. I went back home. I opened a LinkedIn account and I, I, it was a free advice. I didn't, I didn't realize the impact that would do, but I, I just did it, you know? Um, and that actually, that actually made me understand, like, I don't know, uh, sometime after it, it, I understood like the, the, the phase of finding a job is not just being a good professional. Like it's not just being a good data analyst, software developer. It's not just that. To get the job, you have to socialize. You have to know people. Like no, not, you don't have to know a lot of people. You don't have to know specific people. You have to know people, okay? You have to engage. You have to engage. It's a must, okay? So if anyone here thinks like someone will come up to him and say, oh, you're a data analyst, come work for me. Let's go. Yeah, that, that won't happen. Okay. Um, so we need to engage. Um, so what how can we engage? Actions, yeah. What kind of actions did you try to do as um, even as a student or after, uh, after you graduated? Like you're going to tell uh, probably what, what was the right point in time that you said okay i need to stop being all day in the platform and i need to see people outside when did you realize that um i think i think it's i didn't realize that i need to do that huh? i i wanted to i wanted to i mean it was it was very uh i don't know shiny i don't know how to say it in hebrew like to you know go somewhere lectures free food, you know, all the bling, you know, um, it looked somewhat fun. So I started uh, going to meetups and st stuff like that. Um, I don't, uh, I'd say like three months in the course, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and it turned out to be uh, valuable. And, and it turned out to be valuable for, for a few reasons. One is, like I said, just putting yourself out there, engaging. Um, I'll, I'll tell a story. So uh, the first meetup I went to after the practicum kickoff, it was, uh, I don't know if you know Kula Like, the community on LinkedIn, you know? Anyone heard of Kula Like? You know, press your reaction and put an icon. Yeah, that would be great. I saw some yeah, head. I, I, I will thanks for them. Uh, okay. But, but for those that those, the, do not, please tell a little bit about them and I will also sure. share the link so they can also see what is it about. Sure. So basically, it's a huge, huge community that the whole purpose of it is to help juniors in tech to get a job. That's the whole thing. Okay. Like, I don't know, 13,000 people. Okay, most of them are juniors, but you know, these juniors, like, I don't know, people from a year ago, like me, are now working. So it's a big community, a huge community, maybe the, the biggest in the country. Um, so so I, I saw them, they were big back then, I don't know, like 5,000 5, 5, people. Um, <clears throat> so I started engaging, I don't know, just looking around, you know, and they, uh, Exactly. Um, so, so they said they, they threw their, their first meetup, their first like in-person meetup. Um, I don't remember if it's because of COVID that they didn't do that before. I think, I think that's the reason. Anyway, it's, it was the first. Um, out of 5,000 people, how many people came? guess i don't know like i don't know maybe 100 people 90 people we were about 22 okay mm -hmm. yeah something around there um which is surprising 
Um, but that is exactly why that was val valuable, right? Because anyone who, who came was remembered. Like the, the leaders of the group were there, uh, other experienced people from the industry were there. And we were just, we had a chance like to have like this intimate uh, room filled, filled with experienced people and some juniors it was like 50%, something like that. Um, so we had to talk, right? You can't just stand there and, and, and shut up. So, so we, we, we spoke and that's actually where I met like a significant mentor. He still is uh, for me. His name is Adil Kandel, the nicest guy ever. Um, like I could, I could message him like at 2 a.m. He would, he, he would respond. He's, he's really, really nice. And he's very, very experienced and he's there to help. Okay, uh, maybe I'll, I'll segue to the next notion that there are, there are like, I don't know, a ton of people, experienced people, people from the industry that are just waiting, sitting, waiting for people to contact them for help. Okay, just like that, straightforward. People, like some context about that, in how uh, it, it, for people that are not Israeli, it's sometimes a bit weird. That why the hell should I somebody that don't know me will are is willing uh, to help me? Like it's something that outside of Israel is a bit strange. Let's call it. Uh, and the reason is like um, in Israel specifically, uh, we have uh, some kind of trend that can be explained culturally. That once I win, and I did it like from bottom up, I, I, I succeed to get into this new industry. So I have a feeling that I need to give to society back. It's something maybe in Jewish values, even uh, of tikkun olam or, or something like that. Uh, it's connected to Jewish culture, uh, probably. And also to the thing of that we are a small country and why not? He might be my neighbor, something like that. Just to give some cultural context. Awesome. Exactly. Actually, the reason I'm here today, one of the reasons is that because in the, the beginning of the course, I made a deal with God. I said, look, if you're going to make this work, I'm going to make to, to like do the effort and, and help others uh, make it work for themselves. So I'm here. So I guess it worked. Um, so I, I owe God. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Anyway. Um, um, yeah, so people, experienced people uh, are, are waiting to give back, to give, just give. Um, a lot of them, like it, it evolves around communities, um, like maybe in, in, in the data fields, like, I don't know, there are probably a ton of communities about uh, machine learning and all of that, um, BI, and you know better than me what, what communities you have. Maybe Elon, Elon could absolutely help you with that anyways. I'm going to drop some links uh, while you're talking. Sure, sure. Um, it's, uh, it's crucial. It's crucial to, to get yourself in them. Not being super active or something. You don't, you don't need to, right? You don't need to write and comment too much. You just need to engage and if I were you, I mean, how I did it is I just, I, I'll just go to the manager of the group without like realizing who he is, what he does, whatever. If he's a manager of the group, he's probably some, someone, right? I, and I would send him a message like, I politely, like, hi, I'm Nahal. I'm starting my, I don't know, I'm taking my, my first uh, footsteps in the industry, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I need help, right? So most of the times, not most of the times, 100% of the times, I get a, a, a nice feedback, okay? Like a warm feedback, a warm welcome, okay? And most of the times, they would connect me to someone who can help me, like literally. It could be um, some, something professionally, like, uh, like a, in, my, in my field, like a code problem, as simple as that. And it could be like anything like around soft skills, and I don't know, I need a simulation for a job interview or I need someone to look at my CV or whatever. And you have like a, an amazing uh, 
support from practicum today, but like a year back, we didn't have that much. Okay. All this is really like, it's, it's for you. So, so, and I used it, I used like any help I could get and I tried to get it um, because, and the next notion is very important. You guys, we, we have nothing to lose. Okay. Absolutely nothing to lose. Um, the thing we want is to get the job, to get to foot to to place our foot in the industry because when you are in, it's night and day, night and day, really, and and you you feel it and and uh, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I think by, by by this step we we pretty much understand the importance of being active. Uh, but if we, we need to take it to, to practical steps, like, okay, where do I go to find meetups? Like, besides yeah. what we, we will recommend as practicum, like, where in the world I find those? Where, where do you search for them? Okay, so um, there are a few, a few places. First of all, there's an app called Meetup. <laughs> they have meetups there, obviously. Um, a ton, like everything is there and you can search by, but yeah, the link is in the chat right now. Um, you can find by category, title, whatever. You can find anything there. That's to, for, for starters. Now, after that, it's like, there are uh, communities around technologies, okay? Um, let's say there's a huge community around ChatGPT. Okay. Now they're not just talking about ChatGPT, but they're talking about all the ML world. Okay. So that's very interesting. And you, you could be sure that there are some people there that have, that are experienced and have something to, to help and to say. Um, so they are there. Um, so we said meetup, we said around technologies, we said we can say about uh, like, I listen to podcasts. I don't know where you list. Are you listening to podcasts or you are the people who watch YouTube more? Anyways, there are communities around these types of things. Um, and not, not uh, like there are a lot, okay? Um, there are communities around, um, firms like I don't know like Wix okay Wix arrange they arrange a ton of meetups throughout the year a lot mm -hmm. um Microsoft tons of meetups um etc right and again you don't need to be super active or something just enter the community the whatsapp group the discord the whatever everywhere you are like I'm not on Facebook, so I don't bother to to enter Facebook groups. Um, although there are a lot, but I I'm just not there, so I don't. So wherever you are, just enter the community and and I don't know. Start I don't know, chat with something someone not just about whatever. Like if you really have a problem or if you want help with something. Even if, I don't know, it's a TV problem. Okay, let's say, let's say practicum is awesome, but you want like someone else to look at your CV, okay? Just, just ask for help for, about that, right? Um, am I missing something, Elon? Do you think of something else? Um, first of all, let's open it for questions. Guys, if you have questions, just open the mic. It's still small and intimate, so you can ask whatever you want. We have more in questions in the agenda. We, we, we're trying to make a, pod, a podcast-ish kind of vibe. So I'm asking, yes, yeah, I'm asking questions that we, we have planned in advance. But if you have anything with, that you're really curious about, this is time. Just don't be shy. Open and, and, and ask. It's totally okay. fine. So I understand. Hi, my name is Jonathan. I'm uh, uh, from the front uh, uh, for the first course. Mm -hmm. I'm not from the data science, 
but uh, I see that it's relevant for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I understand the first, the most important thing is always to reach for the those kind of groups and meetups and to get socialized and to ask all the questions in the beginning. And this is the way to get information and also to get to know the right people, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, and also I heard about hackathons. Can you explain a little bit what it is, where it, where it uh, happen, where it's happening? How should I know if it's the right thing for me? Because in the end of the day, I'm uh, just in the beginning. I'm in the middle of the course. I want to get better and to know the right people, but I also afraid to embarrass myself. Oh, wow. That is in a great point. Okay, thank you for bringing this up. Um, first thing you should know, even if you make a fool of yourself today, tomorrow, no one remembers, no one, okay? No one remembers whatever bad stuff you did, okay? Um, like I, I'm speaking like if uh, professionally, like you made a fool of yourself, right? Um, so first of all, like Tachlis, how, how to know about hackathons. Um, so LinkedIn is a great place. Um, you see all the time uh, communities or firms, um, companies, uh, they, they share about hackathons that they're arranging. Um, and the same WhatsApp groups, wherever um, they share when they open one. Um, uh, a story about hackathons. I actually, Kula Like that we spoke about earlier, they threw a hackathon and I was just exactly in the middle of the course, of the course, just like, the, just like you. So I barely knew anything, okay? So, but I signed up, whatever. I, I, I assumed that like I'll be surrounded by other uh, more experienced developers and I'll be fine, you know? I'll, I'll just make it make it work. Um, turns out in my team, I was the only developer, okay? So that was bad. Um, but luckily that hackathon wasn't so like development oriented. It was more like uh, uh, entrepreneurially oriented. So I was okay on that, uh, on that end, but still it was a huge experience, okay? It was, it was, uh, like there are two kinds of hackathons. There are like these 24 hours, very intense hackathons. Um, and there are like more like uh, long-term hackathons, a month, two months, okay? So that was a two month hackathon. And the experience of working together with other people is uh, priceless, priceless, okay? And if you, and if you um, happen to have a great team that is even better. Uh, and I happen to be with the great people and we're friends until today. And the, the maximum, maximum you learn, okay? That's the worst thing that could happen. You have nothing to lose, again, nothing to lose, absolutely nothing. Um, so I'd say get your hands dirty, any chance you, you have, any chance you have, um, every piece, every tiny piece of experience is making you very, very close to your job. Uh, some context for those that don't know the term hackathon. So mm -hmm. hackathon is like a, a, co collect, a, like a collaborate, a collaborative uh, activity uh, that people usually come together for. Uh, it's usually 48 hours. Uh, to have a common challenge and you can and you have like competition between different groups to try to solve a specific challenge could be for a commercial cause and though and then like the ones that win get some kind of compensation uh, it's usually hackathons are volunteer uh, activity and it means that you don't get paid for participating in that but in the other hand you don't also pay for participating then it's just volunteer 
Uh, and there are many hackathons that are for social good. It means that uh, it could be to make some technological solution a non-profit or for something that is a, a social problem. Uh, I'm going to drop you here uh, another link. I'm good with the links today. Uh, so um, can I answer Anton's question? Sure. Okay, I'll read it first. I see most of communications in the groups you mentioned so far is in Hebrew. We all here are cool with communications in English, but learning Hebrew takes some time. Maybe another couple of years, maybe more. How is communication mostly organized in analysts' work in Israel? 50-50, 20-80, 10-90. Firstly, I'll say that in the groups, like in texting groups, you can write in English because everyone is in tech. Everyone knows English. Okay? It's not weird or something. Even if everyone writes in Hebrew, I've been in a group that there's only one guy that writes in English, but he writes. Okay? And everyone, not everyone, but he, he gets answers. Okay? He's not ignored or anything. Okay? So writing is better than non, not writing. Um, about meeting up, uh, I can say it's probably the same. Yeah. Um, everyone knows English because this in the, this industry requires English. Um, so it's, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. The worst case, you will draw attention, which is great. So yeah. if you feel a bit awkward, you may say like, Hey, I'm Ole Hadash. So I'm writing in English and then blah, 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 whatever you want. So it's totally fine. Um, yeah, the question there also is more about like work culture, maybe, or like, like how is it organized among analysts? So it's not nothing like it's compared, uh, Anton, like just about how analysts talk, but how people communicate in the high tech industry in general. So written communications, even inside companies, would be even among Israelis. If I will uh, write to now, we will write each other if we work together in English. Because the possibility that maybe we need to CC or forward on some oh, topic that don't work, work in, uh, in English, uh, that, that don't work in Hebrew. So we, they, we want them to understand and we already get that. What do happens, however, is the small talk part, how we talk in lunch uh, and in the corridor and the water cooler. So that would be in Hebrew. So the small talk uh, and, and, and politics stuff, and, uh, gossiping, uh, natural to be performing in Hebrew, but work stuff is definitely fine in uh, in English, and we actually do that. Um, which you could just do in English uh, still, and it will be fine mm -hmm. because yeah. everyone knows English. Uh, um, any more questions? Please ask. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about the possibility of hunting your own mentors. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned that you uh, you found this guy, Adir, and how it, did it happen? Like, it wasn't, uh, like, nowadays in practice, we do provide any, all graduates that we will, they will get connected with a mentor, yes. But even though sometimes there is lack of chemistry, sometimes you just need something a bit different or just change of environment or an, an additional person. So how did you find yourself a mentor and, and, and how did you understand that that person is able to actually help you? Okay, so, so as I said, I met him first. Actually, I first met him like, I don't know, uh, on LinkedIn maybe maybe on Telegram, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I met him first time in the Kula Like first uh, meetup. I don't even know if we spoke. Maybe I shook his hand just to like, I know you. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But then like after a month or two, I met him again in another meetup. This time he needed a, a ride to the train. So I gave him a ride to the train and we have like five minutes to chat. I just, I just asked anything I could think of. Um, and from then, uh, from then we just kept chatting, kept chatting, LinkedIn, WhatsApp. Um, and I came to him 
with professional questions. I came with like not not really personal life stuff, but uh, that have to do something with the professional life. Uh, he's a he's a experienced developer, so he he went through a lot. Um, so and, and he made me feel comfortable asking him. That's another thing. Is it more like help for finding your first job? Just tips how to behave in situation? What kind of help are we talking about here? What a mentor can do for me? Um, absolutely everything. It depends on his on his uh, in his like how experienced he is. Um, he could be he could just like help help emotionally first of all, right? Just you know lowering the bar, the stress bar, mm -hmm. and just just making me feel like I could really do this, right? Like I'm, I'm working. I found a job eight months ago, eight months. That's it. Okay. So I know exactly how it feels to search for a job and to do the course and, and all that. So, so speaking to someone like, like that really, it really does makes you relax a bit. That's first. Um, second of all, obviously, professional questions about the whatever you do. Mm -hmm. um, and even if I don't, in my case, even if I don't know the answer, I could ask or I can like uh, 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 direct someone to 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 someone else that can answer him. That's the, secondly. And thirdly, and this is for like mentors who who really, really try to to help that i got help from someone who just sat with me for an hour and simulated like an interview okay uh and that was that was very important because the day after i had an interview and and he he pointed out like a ton of stuff i should i should work on which helped which helped a lot if maybe the last link haver me ilan you know this? Mm, yeah. Haverme. Priceless. Priceless. You just fill out a form for what you need. Everything. Anything. And they will just hook you up with someone who can help you. Um, Gonna send this over. at the moment. Haverme. Very useful. Friend from the industry. You can apply there and, and, and become the, and get experienced people to help you in whatever you actually need. Really, whatever, whatever. Tons of volunteer groups in Israel of people are just willing to do, uh, to help juniors with some orientation, uh, like investing 15, 20 minutes of, of time to get somebody uh, get along in the way. Something that, in, at least in the high-tech industry, I see that quite a lot. People feel totally fine on, yeah, let's invest on 15 minutes, chat with this person. Yeah. Awesome. Um... So, so a mentor could really could really set you up for a variety of, of, of needs. Um, and of course, it doesn't have to be this one guy or one person. Um, it could be, I don't know, it could be specific for, for a one a one a one time thing. It could be, I don't know, it could be really whatever. Uh, I know practicum does the like the mentorship is like for it's it's a long it's a long-term thing, right? It's for a few weeks or, I don't know, months even. Um, so that's another kind of, of mentorship. But uh, the, the bottom line is go get help because there is for free for anyone. And this another important thing, like if we're talking, if we were talking about culture and the culture of like asking for something or taking someone's time or whatever these people expect you to come and ask so it's not like you're taking their time or whatever they're expecting it they want this um so it's the, no hard feelings no no embarrassment in that mm, just for the question from jonathan here um so about linkedin uh, every cohort will go through a career prep course and the, there is a specific assignment of build your profile according to specific standards that we give and then we also get feedback about it uh, in in uh, web developers we, we still didn't reach your uh, cohort so we so heads up it's gonna happen very soon okay 
But still, if you feel you're ready, אחי, yeah. יאללה, <laughs> do it. כאילו, no, no time to waste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We don't want to discourage. Uh, just try, uh, start working with it. It just get, will get better over time. Yeah. Uh, another question from Yuri here. Um, can you tell about your job interview and technical tasks that you had to solve now? Um, yes. So like maybe maybe you can you can elaborate a bit about the question like what do you mean tell about just how the experience Yuri do you want to elaborate your question I have the same question because now I'm studying like backend and I'm already not sure about my frontend knowledge And uh, the tech interview is my biggest fear. So how mm -hmm. did you prepare? So any tips? Yeah, sure. Um, not sure how to start. Mm -hmm. so th firstly, th there are a million things to do, you can do. Um, first of all, I would go to YouTube, okay? And in, in the Kula Like, Uh, actually, it's it, it's called something else. I'll, I'll, maybe, Ilan, you have Academia the Phoenix, Zenikra? Um, but they don't have their own brand or, or different channels. So all of them are inside Kula Life. So we delivered that uh, link already. Awesome. So uh, they have like a few, uh, a few videos about interviews, tech interviews, and not tech interviews. Um, I would start there, like just getting a picture of how to behave, what you should, what do's and don'ts, stuff like that. About the professional level, go to code walls, lead code, and just just grind. Go through questions. It's it's very important. I would say that like uh, the type of technical interviews and technical assignments that you get from uh, job opportunities, they, they, they're diverse. I mean, there are some that are very similar to lead code and code words where they are very analytical, very theor theoretical, um, like not uh, real life scenarios. On the other hand, you have more real life scenarios oriented uh, tech uh, assignments. So. So what you do in, in, on the platform and through the projects is more like the real life scenarios that you'll get in uh, tech interviews and assignments and code words and lead code will be more like the theoretical part. I think I, uh, I hope I answered. Mm, I see here other questions, but, but that flow into actually similar, but, but, but it, it, those are different topics like tech interviews uh, about more about the hiring process. Yeah, sure. Everything is connected at the end to getting that one job, but there are multiple kind of uh, activities that we can talk about. And we're trying to uh, still stay in the context of uh, networking. And until now, just a recap, we understood like the power of going and attending to meetups. We understand now where to find them in groups and specific websites to search meetups. Then when you go to meetups, we understand from, uh, at least my impression from now, maybe one somebody wants to reflect their own uh, understanding, but it's like magic happens randomly there. You just go shake hands and <laughs> hope for something nice to happen for a conversation to develop. Yeah, did I get that point? Like that's what happened. Um, you can... I Like the easiest way to start talking with someone that mm -hmm. I found really is just going to someone and uh, say, oh, you're, you're the guy from, uh, from some, some company, just name one. And he'd say, no, ah, really? Where are you from? And then that's it. You can, you can start talking. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's the easiest. Um, you understand that but you yeah. go to a meetup Or, or inside of any group, you can also find yourself a mentor, somebody that you can just uh, ask questions about any kind of topic that is still in professionally, code wars. Okay. Um, 
we'll also discuss a little bit about hackathons, what they are, um, how to find them uh, through LinkedIn, through specific groups like uh, Code for Israel. Um, in the summer, we're gonna introduce you a collaboration that we're doing with uh, uh, guys that do um, volunteer projects um, for data-driven products in, in society, for example, for reducing car accidents. So uh, we have a nice collaboration that we're going to introduce this summer, uh, probably July. Um, and that more or less covers the, the, the high end, at least, of networking and where to find those opportunities. But I want to hear you guys. What do you think is keeping you at the moment away from these opportunities? Like, why are you at the moment actively going to uh, meetups? You willing to try? You think you feel uh, you you find some barriers in the way? What do you think? Uh, for me, I don't feel uh, comfortable enough. Uh, my, I think I don't have enough knowledge to start to uh, introduce myself uh, and also time. Mm -hmm. I uh, barely uh, uh, can uh, do my, uh, my uh, missions, my projects in the time. So uh, I, I, I thought maybe I will start to do it after the course, mm -hmm. but uh, I understand this is steps that, uh, that should start uh, right now and not to wait yeah. with it after is already late yes so i, I don't know we have to make time late. <laughs> i mean i mean I, not not in a dis discouraging way i mean earlier the better you, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. And the, 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 it is something that maybe is something that specializes this combination of people in the group uh, most of us that take practicum uh, are people that already work in something and, and they take practicum because it's the mo mo probably the only bootcamp in Israel that is also online and also have support. So, so we understand that time management is super crucial and, and, and learn to manage our time effectively is, a, is a definitely a challenge. Like, I don't know, parents here, uh, I have two of those at home. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely difficult to find time to go to a meetup that starts 7.30 p.m. Uh, sometimes we need uh, our other meaningful other to, uh, to keep an eye on the kids so we can go and develop our careers. Uh, so yeah, it happens. Uh, working in, in the morning, uh, or 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 you in the platform in the early morning before. So yeah, time management is definitely an issue, and it's uh, some it's somewhat a barrier. Um, but even now, we we're, we're having like an online version of a meetup, uh, and there are actually also meetups that are online, and nothing prevents us at the moment. Uh, copy paste all the names of the participants on our LinkedIn and add them as friends and ask something, right? So yeah, it's not as good as being live in, in an office in fancy place, having nice pizza and beer and mingling with people. But this is the, the second best, let's say, yeah? And so there are also meetups that are online. Uh, it does require some other skills to understand, okay, how do I cater the names and who, how do I identify who is the lead here? probably the one that talks more usually <laughs> and so so it, it, it is a challenge for us specifically as practicum people and uh, we we should be aware of that and again time management sometimes it's okay to say okay let's postpone building my cv that i just got in the career prep course Let's go and invest these two hours in, in, in mingling because I really don't know anybody in Israel. So I need to go out of my home and know actual people. Yeah. Uh, as as uh, Nahar mentioned, and I think it's valuable, uh, when he met his mentor in one meetup, but only in the second one, they had the chance to actually talk more. 
it's like going almost like dating that it felt like it's first date you <laughs> lose each other small talk and in the second well, date, okay can you help me first meet? day second base <laughs> something like that and um i would say even more that yeah i find that i don't know that like over 90 of people who finish courses the networking part is the barrier is the is the thing that like they didn't really pushed for it they didn't really put the put the energy in that and that's why like they statistics as we said right you only if you only had 10 opportunities that's not too much but if you had like a hundred already 50 i don't know what uh that's significantly more so i would i i say that and they can use it on your on your uh use it carefully i say you should put at least 50 percent of your energy in networking at least at least that's what i think maybe it's more true after finishing the course maybe um i don't know but some effort has to go there it has to go there so elena asked us so networking is crucial <laughs> yeah, I would say, I would say so. Would you say that if you weren't going to any, attending to any activity and you just plainly being with yourself, you're an, let's say you're an introvert, introvert person, which you actually not specifically know how, but <laughs> others might be more introverts. So I'm not comfortable meeting people. I just want to apply to a job by uh, sending my CV and that's it. Do I have a chance? Uh, you have a chance. I don't know how much. I do think that the chances are greater if you do go out and meet people. But it's important to say that it's not the only. It's not the only way. It's mm -hmm. not the only way. I mean, I don't know what happens uh, with with data analysts in open source. I don't know what's happening. What's the scene over there? I know in in, in programming that. The open source scene is quite big um and you could put yourself on the map as we say in the hebrew by uh contributing to open source mm -hmm. um that is definitely a path for introverts um i don't know what happened what have what's happening with data on that side uh, our version in data people is like a uh, kaggle competitions uh... mm -hmm and participating there and that's like the way of collaborating with others uh, you guys know what is Kaggle no okay I'm gonna send you this I see Maxim okay Maxim is already a pro Maxim a few words how would you explain Kaggle in shortly Kaggle yeah <laughs> not a pro no i know of it rather than i know it <laughs> so basically so uh, mm -hmm. yeah go ahead no 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 you you speak <laughs> kaggle is a gay it's a place that hosts uh, data competitions okay and uh, they usually will give you nice clean data compared to reality at work at work, you actually invest a lot of time cleaning data. Um, so there you already get it quite nice, but you get to collaborate with each other and compete uh, on, on specific data sets. You can analyze them. Uh, and it's a way, so, a way of also practicing beyond what you get in the platform uh, with different kind of challenges, different kind of industries. Uh, sometimes you can get, I don't know, a population statistics in the world or i don't know a, a, no a, a environmental challenges all kind of challenges right and you can compete and submit there your reply this is our most closely version to open source competitions now a question here um do we need like uh, i don't know three minutes uh, for a break 
because then we we start our second session of of the day and we're going to practice networking in breakout rooms we we i'm going to explain how to present ourselves better uh and then split into rooms to practice and discuss what the results so you guys need two three minutes or let's move on let's let's have a small poll about this what do you say yes no i would take a break if, if i count okay write me in chat yes no why n why yes for break and for moving on okay i get the idea guys let's see you at 8 30 you know get five minutes 38 yes i guess event industry event industries how many years oh well, let's say four four years what did you do exactly in events industry what does it mean uh organizing events uh for example football championship in russia mm -hmm. i was working with adidas like as their manager at the stadium uh, okay let's take that that piece only just because you have most experience in events okay so to organize events you need all kind of skills human skills okay first of all yeah organizing events so organization of something yeah and you're studying actually a uh, development Front -end. Right? yeah full stack how is being an organized and structured person important to being a good developer nahal is it important absolutely <laughs> if you're not absolutely. a well-organized person can you be a good developer uh not a good one not, no, a group. not really so organization skills even though i i, I assume a uh, german that your your tool was mainly excel probably back then right correct it's okay you don't need to uh, be a genius sql person as a organizing uh, uh, as, as an event organizer it's okay but that tool first of all you use excel so you used to see probably prices of suppliers. The... Yeah, I'm very experienced in the Excel, Excel right. basically. Okay, so first of all, Excel, organization skills already. We can transfer that habit that you got yourself into becoming a better developer. You're not lying here, okay? You're just rephrasing a specific uh, period of your professional experience that it's relevant to what you're trying to become. I'm going to get another hook uh, from your time in uh, restaurants, you said? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know this from another uh, graduate of us that was uh, also a restaurant manager. And what he did, he also had this uh, back and forth with vendors uh, and getting supplies for dishes. And he needed to, uh, he dealt a lot with food cost. In order yeah, to yeah, find correct. specific dishes, you need to, to calculate how much it you work with database. Yeah. So it's not really a database. You start with an Excel, and it's okay because your industry was hospitality. And oh, in, this, in the restaurant business, we have our own databases. Like you need to know how to work with it. So so you already understand that mindset of 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 seeking for the best uh, getting of sales. Inside. Yes. If you need an insight of where to get the best price for something, okay, getting insights out of data, it's there, but not in a highly developed mode as you're learning now in fancy bootcamp. You understand? Mm -hmm. You have, but you had that skill in your past. In in a in, in a probably less developed and advanced way, but it's okay. That skill was in the background, and you can use that in your pitch when you're trying to portray yourself as a front-end developer. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So all of us now going to split into pairs, and it's nice that we got 20 people, including myself. We're going to split into groups, and we're going to practice the uh, structure that I showed before. Okay? I'm going to just share it again for the ones that... Uh, 
need an extra clamp. So the structure means we tell who we are now. I am today a um, data analysis student, almost graduating a data analysis bootcamp. In my past, I was, I don't know, a teacher, I, I was a finance manager, whatever. Uh, I made Aliyah to Israel one year, two years ago. That was the yesterday. And I thought that I want to uh, be more relevant. Israel is a lot about innovation. So I'm a register to my uh, to this bootcamp so I can become a data analyst and, and, and use my organizational skills to become a better data analyst. Something like that. Structure is clear, right? Great. So uh, organizing, managing, communicating. Great. Now you want to give some input before we uh, split into break rooms? Uh, yeah. In the break rooms, you probably will get stuck like, uh, I don't know, 15 times. Get stuck. This is exactly the time to get stuck. Get stuck, start over. It's mm -hmm. totally fine. Even write yourself like some bullet points is yeah. also perfectly fine. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, split into pairs for 12 minutes. Okay, and it's gonna give you the time to note, write yourself notes. And what you should be able to do in these 12 minutes is to at least have one, two minutes each to present themselves to the other person in the room. Okay, if you get stuck with somebody uh, that it's not uh, really live at the moment, uh, I see that now we have less people okay 17 people i will start to take i will stay in the lobby uh, and I reassign you so first of all thank you for sharing that uh, in introducing ourselves and and talking about ourselves is is oftenly really embarrassing because this is the place that we need to sell ourselves and, and we're not sales people even if we are working at the moment in sales we're here to try to make a human authentic bond and then like why I need to uh, show my best side as a data analyst who am I to be a data analyst but actually you are and that's exactly what you're aiming in life for the moment or a, a developer uh, everybody with their uh, training course um let's hear out more people how was it to uh, talk about themselves in front of, of a stranger German, how was the, 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 the recap? We... It was great. My speech was not great, but my uh, partner, Maxime, he was a great listener. So, <laughs> and basically his uh, answer gave me many tips, like to steal for myself. Uh, he's very experienced in this and uh, this is very helping. Yeah, Maxine. I'm sorry for Maxine because I didn't provide much. <laughs> and basically, his uh, presentation was very great. I would hire him. I, I also <laughs> believe Maxime should be already hired. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that's right. I, I, yeah, I almost got a job. If that guy had a job, of course, for <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? He might not be the first to get one. Yeah. yeah, and uh, then I will. So, so once he is uh, so, um, afterwards, uh, Germa, that, that's the word. Yeah, that, that's the name. Sorry. Uh, after what he, he said, I'm uh, considering becoming a mentor. <laughs> one day, <laughs> right? Soon, soon, um, sure. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say about this. Uh, uh, short assignment, and so uh, I know I, I enjoy talking. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy talking about myself, and uh, I've always thought I know what to uh, um, uh, to say about myself. Well, we all know who we are, what we've done, and what we, <laughs> where we are at, and what we <laughs> do, where we want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but the important thing is to say the right things at the right time. Only the relevant things. Uh, it's uh, to cut the long story short, 
And you know, this uh, um, famous anecdote about telling a pen, you know, okay, sell me this pen, right? And, um, and that's what you are doing. You are selling yourself to a potential employer. And so you need to say little, but with these few words, you need to sell yourself but to make them um, uh, want to keep, keep talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean that I've practiced this and, and I'm an expert. Mm, maybe I will have the right to say so when I get hired eventually. Once I'm not, it's only in theory. <laughs> so when you want to know theory, just come to me. Uh, Maxim is one of the, is the one of the latest graduates. Uh, like from February, if I'm not mistaken, you graduated the practicum, right? So he's already an active job seeker. Uh, and in how many, let's say, uh, hiring processes were you in different levels, from the phone call to more advanced? How many processes can you tell that you already went through? So maybe I've been too picky, but about concerning actual interviews, I've had a dozen, probably. Wow. Not very many. Yeah. A dozen? Twelve? Um, yeah. There's 10 to 12. That's a lot. Wow. That's a lot, man. <laughs> many opportunities. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, most of them uh, you know, uh, were cut short. During the very initial stage, meaning the uh, the initial phone interview, or the initial online interview, and, and then they would give you um, feedback, um, saying, "Unfortunately, we have decided to move ahead with another candidate." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet, it, it means first of all, your CV is valid and it gets you results. And now, the the, the magic work is like to optimize probably your speech and, and after that, the, the, the technical part. But beside that, okay. All of you guys- Statistics. Yeah. Statistics. Statistics. 100 CVs turn into, in, 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 in generally four, three, four of hiring opportunities to get one contract. That's more or less the drill. Um, some get it earlier and some get it after more uh, ex experience. Okay. It's all about optimizing this process. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no. and, yep. and then I'd like to make another note. Uh, so Nahar, when, when he was hired, it was a very tight market, meaning that uh, uh, demand for um, skilled and not so skilled um, <laughs> data persons, um, data people, well, was higher, right, uh, than the supply. Um, now the market has changed, and it's not so easy uh, to land a job, especially a first job in Israel, and for someone who is not uh, very good at speaking Hebrew, by the way. Um, so you need to really put more effort and be more resourceful in your ways of looking for, for a job. And so my, my um, way uh, has been to ask for referrals uh, in LinkedIn. So I get connected to people, people I never knew, and I almost had no rejects from them. So people would accept my invitations and they, uh, I would immediately ask them, hey, there's a job opening at your company. Could you please uh, send a referral Reporting to the hiring problem. manager? Problem. And that's what I, and so that's what I've done multiple times. And thus I've been able to, to get interviews, at least interviews. Wow. So to see what happens. It's amazing to hear like how many opportunities you got so far. Um, like it, it keeps me optimistic. And to, to be honest, I want to share with you also. Uh, we go to the you know a, a bit different topic. We, we we're here to talk, discuss a, a self presentation for hiring process. But if I need to uh, show share some interesting insight that I learned just last week, uh, I was in a a big conference about human capital in high-tech industry. 
So it, it involves like, you know, big stakeholders from government uh, ministries, uh, from big nonprofits that are willing to promote uh, diversity in the high tech and also training companies. Uh, and so we also went to represent practicum there. And we learned from the one of the big report that they did uh, that in 2022, so uh, if the, the, the companies that hired most juniors and in their definition, juniors is from zero years to two years of experience, it's still a junior. Uh, so in most cases, 50% of the cases, they go, got a job from companies that their size is from one employee to 10 employees. So small startups, one to 10 employees, they're more willing to get junior candidates. Uh, for me, it was a new uh, insight because I thought these kind of companies cannot even afford an employee and that's it. And, and they, if they have the money, they will definitely take an experienced one. So no, it means they will, they just need people that are hands on and willing to get their hands dirty. And if you got the right motivation, it, the, the hiring process is, is even smaller because at this stage, one to 10 employees, very early stage, it means that they basically don't have HR person yet. So <laughs> you get hired, the guy, the person that will uh, uh, interview you is the CEO. Okay, so if you need just a leg in the door, that's a nice opportunity to spend your first two years in a small company and get more experience. It could be an agency, it could be a startup, but one to 10 is the size for juniors. Not only, but also uh, more probable. That's what I uh, learned. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, because all of you think, oh, high tech is Wix and, uh, and Microsoft and Google and that's it. No, high tech is tons of companies that nobody hears about them until they be meaningful enough to get picky. So the companies you hear about them in the news, they're, they're just big enough so they can get picky. Uh, let's talk more about this experience of telling about ourselves to strangers because this simulation is one of the questions that we will get asked in any interview that we're going to. Uh, Liraz, how was it for you? Um, it was challenging. But Who was your partner? At the end, uh, I was uh, teamed up with Nina, yeah. and we got to know each other. Great. So, at, so at the end, we just started to um, think about ways to um, to take the the skills and make them transferable, to connect them to the skills that that analysis requires. What in your past is relevant for that analysis job from what you understand nowadays? I have a managerial, I have, I have been a, a, a security system manager and an operation, operation and, and assistant. So I was working a lot with Excel and also I have a BA in sociology and um, communication, so I was doing a lot of research. So I think all of these are connected to that analysis. Sounds good, and how about you, Nina? How was working with Tiraz and uh, Anna? Uh, I was really nervous, but <laughs> it was fine. Tiraz was very supportive. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was, it was fine. It was a good, good experience. Cool, cool. And and from your background, what can you, what do you feel like, this is very relevant for me becoming a data analyst. From what background do you come from? Well, that's a very difficult question for me. Uh -huh. uh, I have been working as an English language tutor and I thought that like maybe I could implement it somehow in a way that like teaching requires like analyzing like uh, strong and weak sides of your students in order to like adjust your teaching strategy something like that maybe mm -hmm. uh, so that's what i came up with <laughs> uh, again if i understand correctly you uh, were dealing with uh, languages as as teaching or, yes, yes. or, tra or translator 
teaching teaching tutor yeah okay. so it means that you need to make your teaching interesting compelling so people can understand possibly quickly and effectively how to communicate yeah so, sure so that can be called communication skills <laughs> and if you're a data analyst that know very good SQL and Python, but you cannot present what you're doing and you're the only one that understands these conclusions. So, so it's, it's more difficult. So your ability and your experience with communicating and, and, and presenting to others is a strength. This is your competitive strength. Beside that, you also know languages, more than one. And that's also but uh, not but not Hebrew, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Because the high tech market its purpose is not to serve Israelis. I don't know if you know that, guys, but the purpose of the high tech industry is to export what we invent here. We make innovative, cool stuff in Israel, and we export it to Europe and to United States to make their lives easier and cooler. <laughs> but we don't enjoy these fruits in Israel. <laughs> So we, that's why we demand English language in, in high tech. So Hebrew is not a concern. Okay, hope so. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, welcome. Um, more, more comments. Who wants to share their experience? Roman, I didn't meet you yet. Hey, my name is Roma. So I actually work in some little business, uh, e-commerce business. Mm -hmm. And it was very, like you said, 10 people. I did not enjoy it, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I was speaking when I was uh, tr trying to get a job. I was more in a WordPress uh, developer in a one year ago. So I'm actually uh, went to a lot of uh, interviews and challenged myself. And um, it's kind of, I'm just like, you know, just um, processing it. Like, mm -hmm. And you know, what are you learning at the moment? In which course? Practicing a full stack de full stack. development, yes. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, so your background is totally linked to what you were you were doing. This is one of the classic examples. You were doing yeah. website and designs or whatever in, in WordPress or e-commerce context. Yeah, and, and you are the one to stop just dragging a, a pre-built components, but build your own thing from scratch. Yeah, exactly. That's the story. I have enough in it and I have enough of a, like the low tech. Yeah. And I want to, to go to the high tech, you know? <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a good story. Classic one. And you know, people, if, if you get to get this pitch to people like Nahal and, 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 and if Nahal was hiring a front end developer, or that's definitely a way to go. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's super cool. That's super cool. I, what's it now doing? Sorry, I'm uh, now. Ah, you in the middle. Uh, yeah. Now you can represent. I'm a developer. I'm a front end developer. I actually have a background in WordPress too. Oh, that's, that's the exactly cool. same same story. Uh, I was curious and I wanted more, and I <laughs> just uh, yeah. So guys, to recap all this session into conclusions, okay? We went through Nal's story. We understand that he even have a, like the, the, the weak link, we can call it, from totally almost irrelevant context, working in Homo's place, making a full transition while he's a student, while he has a family on top of his mind. He has, you need to take care for them. He decides to make this bold change, become a developer. He joins our friend C course, works and start investing on networking skills, socializing. He's a nice person to just try, meet and opportunities randomly happen. It took him to 
uh, meet interesting people. Maybe they didn't give him his first job, but they give them nice advice that make you feel more confident. He took on himself mentors and he collected them, them among, along the way. Maybe one person like Adir or two per persons. I, I, I heard about at least two mentors along the way. There probably were, were more, in, if I understand more. Uh, then he also shared uh, with us hackathons. Okay, also a valid way to uh, get opportunities for experience and work with other people that might recommend or give their two cents of how to get to that desired job that they're doing. So the the link here of if you're a developer and connecting with other developers is cool, exactly as analysts should uh, stick together with other analysts or even data <laughs> if you're willing, the ones that here more willing to go to the machine learning AI side. Uh, it's a nice combo of teams that have data scientists and data analysts working together. Uh, so the, you guys, people uh, should stick together and find each other in, in this. <clears throat> then we talk about how to make this embarrassing self-presentation. Well, and it's good, of course, for a job interview, but also in a meetup, you, you want to get that question. So who you are? So tell me about yourself. And then like you get this 30, seconds one minute to talk about yourself because if you talk too much you're starting to be boring for the other side you know uh so we need to keep it short and sweet and we practice that now uh, now that we feel a bit more less embarrassed than before we need to practice this skill how to do it until you graduate first of all we can arrange more of these kind of sessions if you're willing to do uh, i'm gonna drop here a a poll so just give your uh, rating one is totally suck and 10 is great if it's good we do more so, uh, activities in this kind of style and try not to repeat things uh, because then i get bored so i always try to find a nice new feature to do so it's fun and amusing for all of us um let's see Mm -hmm. okay i have all kind of eight and tens i have a five okay we will learn from that um okay M more or less i understand it was nice uh and, and might consider more activities like this okay that's cool that's cool i'm gonna uh, save this print screen so i understand now the the, the feedback and, and think about it later. I need I need time to reflect. Uh, so it's cool. Um, and with this, we get. I hope we're going to get over time more confident on how to present ourselves, also on meetups and also in our money time in the desired uh, job interviews that we will see in the near future. And they will come. And they will come. It will take hard work to find that one employer that will tell us, yes, I want to hear about you more. Okay, let's meet. Let's have this 10 minute talk. And the three, they, there are three questions that always repeat in a hiring processes. And I want you to, don't prepare for it right now, unless you're like Maxime, an active job seeker at the moment, but store it in the back of the mind, okay? Three questions that will repeat in all hiring processes. One, so tell me about yourself. Definitely. Two, tell me about a project that you did. Okay. And here you tell uh, in details, in English, uh, about a specific project, the most relevant to the place that you're going to get a job interview at, right? If it's an e-commerce company, so you tell about e-commerce project that you did in the in, in practical. Okay, if not, you invent one. If not, you tell about the, the, the most similar project that you did. Okay, but stay in the context. And the third question, tell me about a fuck up. Okay, or in other words, a failure, a, some, a challenge that you, a professional struggle that you had and how you overcome it. Now, the reasons behind these questions, first of all, the, so tell me about yourself. I need to trust you. 
in Israel, business culture, we have something that is very impersonal. I think you guys see that very quickly by living in Israel, how we close, go, uh, we were close to work and, and many other options, how we talk with each other. Uh, we don't keep a uh, distance. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first of all, we need to like the people we work with. Even as managers, we have that. We're, I need to like you first and then show me you are professional. In other countries, it's exactly opposite. First of all, show me your recommendations. First of all, show me your certificates. Then tell me, show me that it's tough love. Show me first that you're professional. Only then maybe I will like you. So Israel culture is the opposite. First of all, I need to like you. And if I don't like you, you're a douchebag and I don't want to work with you. And I don't care how professional you are. It's something a bit different culturally. Um, so that's about it. So tell me about yourself. The second part of tell me about the project. I don't, I want to know that you're not fake. Everybody can, any bootcamp graduate can tell me, yes, I'm a data analyst because I have this certificate now. It doesn't count. Okay. A certificate don't make you a data analyst. It's a mindset. What's in store in your mind. So as a potential hiring manager, I'm asking you, tell me about the project. I want you to tell me in details about that project. What was it? What was its goal? What did you try there? What was your part in that project? You're not God that do all the projects uh, one man show. And if you do, so tell about it. Exactly step by step. I try this, I fail. I try to program that in SQL. I get a wrong answer. I try to ask my friend. We also got, uh, so I, I, I found in chat GPT, I wrote a query and I found something interesting. I tried that it worked, great. Now I trust that you know what you're talking about. So that's the second part. And, and, and to talk about a failure and how you recovered from it, it's about to show you what you're made of. Because a high-tech industry and, and, the, and specifically in startups and in smaller companies, 250 and less, reality changes very fast. You start in a company that is one to 10 employees, in a year, it could, it could turn into 100 and, and, and you get multiple changes. So we want to check if you're resilient enough to handle a, a reality that changes a lot. Okay. Even in big corporations, in, in the big ones, they also test uh, resilience because you might work some on a project six to one year, six months, one year, whatever. And then they throw it all away to the trash. The work is like, Okay, we don't need it anymore. And how you react. So your reaction here shows me if you're strong enough to handle stress, feedback, failure. I want to show that you, you're strong enough. Um, and, and for that kind of people, the high-tech sector is willing to pay. Uh, so it's more about the attitude that you bring and, and not being afraid of failure and, and, and to see how you recover. That's the, 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 the issue. So this is three questions you, you just want to store in the back of your mind for later. I was Elon, and it was a pleasure evening with you guys. Thank you. Uh, I can stay another couple of minutes if you have more questions, but uh, class is dismissed, we can say. 